Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take one Venus flytrap and turn it into basically as many as you want. Let me show you how it's done. Venus flytraps, just like this one here, are plants that naturally divide on its own. As you guys can tell from this clip here, there are about five or six little baby plants inside of here. And they all came from this one mother plant on the side here. I actually got all of the Venus flytraps that I own from just two pots that I bought from the big warehouse store and I've already sold five and I have like 10 now and we're gonna have like another five or six or however many is in here. Now it is actually very easy to separate and propagate these guys. Like I said, they divide naturally so when you take them out, you will split them. You can also do something called rhizome divisions which I will try to show today depending on the size of the rhizome of the Venus flytrap but it's basically the same as pulling the little plants off of the mother plant. It is very, very simple. And um, I hope that you guys will find this video very helpful. Now, first off, there's a couple things. The best time to actually repot your Venus flytrap is midwinter to very early spring. You want the plant to be dormant. Right now, it is winter in Australia. It is July now, near the end of July. And um, that means that we're heading into spring soon. So this is actually the best time to do it. But yeah, as I said, you want the plant to be dormant because if you do it while they're growing, they get some stress on, you know, naturally because you've just pulled them out of the ground. And um, yeah, it will stunt their growth a little bit for your growth season. So the best time to do it is in winter and very early spring. So let's get started with this. The first thing we'll do is take off all of these old leaves, just like that. And then I will show you how to take the plant out of the pot. And then I'll show you actually how to divide them up and repot them. Yeah. It's a very, very easy process. I hope you guys um, get your pots out and follow along. Okay, so now that we've taken off most of the old leaves, you can see the plant looks a little bit cleaner. And now I will just readjust the camera and show you how to take it out of the pot. It's very easy. You put the plant in the middle of your hand like that. You tap it, squeeze the sides of the pot gently and give it a little bit of a shake. And then the plant falls out onto your hand. Don't worry about the traps closing. That is normal, that will happen. Obviously, the plant wouldn't be alive if the traps weren't closing. It's meant to do that. So don't stress out about it. But let me just change the camera to show you how it's done. So like I said, squeeze the sides of the pots very gently. See the actual plant itself moving. Do that on both sides. Put your hand on top, turn upside down, and just use the momentum of the soil to slide it all out. Very easy. Pot is clean. And here we have our Venus flytrap and all its babies that it grew naturally by itself. Now, at this point, you can kind of inspect around the sides, look for any little roots that might be there. This shows you just the general health of the plant, how big it is. And as you can see, these roots are pretty far down here. So this is a very happy plant. So then the next step, very easy. You just gently separate all of the soil, just gently tease it like this. And try not to break their roots, but if you do, it isn't a problem. Honestly, it's not a big issue. Unless you break all of them off, then um, yeah, then there's an issue. All right, so there we have as much soil off that I can get. What you can also do is you can just take your plant to the tap and turn the water on very gently and just get out the rest of the soil. It doesn't make a big difference. To me, it's not really gonna help me because honestly, to me, it doesn't make much difference, but to other people, it does help them out a little bit. Now, this is the next part. You need to ensure that you have the correct size pots. This is the pot that it was put into. I planted it into this and you can see how long the roots are. It goes pretty much down to the bottom. You can grow them in smaller pots, like these ones. I'm gonna be putting the small ones into these small pots. And the reason why I use these small pots is so that it's cheaper for people to buy it and it's easier for them to maneuver them around. It's really just to help people save the cost on it and the plants still stay healthy. If you want to put your plants into its final pot that you never want to really repot it, you want to pot about double the length in this one about that long, it's about 18 to 20 centimeters. Um, that's, a, that's the length that you really want because these guys make very long roots and very big bulbs, especially when they're adult plants. 
We have one adult planter that is dormant. The rest are all babies, as I've said a couple times now. But they do grow fine in small, plot, um, small pots. I have tons of plants in small pots. And to the people that think that they will die in a small pot, trust me, they don't. I have very happy plants in small pots on the water table and they're also dividing. So yeah, don't always think that, you know, your plants will die if you don't have the right size pot. They will be fine. Next thing to tell you guys is the type of soil that we have here. We have peat and perlite in a ratio of one is to one by volume. That is it. Very easy. It's sphagnum peat moss and just straight medium sized perlite. I find sphagnum to be better than sphagnum moss because sphagnum moss holds much more water in my experience and it actually can cause the plants to rot away. And if you aren't very experienced with sphagnum moss, you won't really know how to lay the sphagnum moss out properly. Some people just take the moss and just stuff it into a pot, stuff the plants in, they think that's good enough. No, you kind of have to layer the sphagnum moss and make it flat so that the roots have good contact with the moss. It's pretty difficult and it's, you know, just more likely that your plant will rot away. But it does work for some people, so if you want to do that, you can do that, but my advice is to use peat. Now, enough talking, let me show you how to divide the plant. Over here, you can see we have our main rhizome. We have a small rhizome there, and on this side, it looks like we have three rhizomes coming across here. Now, this is good for us because I can show you guys how to actually do a rhizome division. And it is very, very easy. Essentially, you grab the plant like that, and you just pull it away from the rhizome, just like that. And now we will divide this one up some more. You can see there's tons of little small rhizomes inside of there. Do the same thing. Grab the two parts, pull them apart. Now we have, what is this? A brand new plant, brand new Venus flytrap plant from one main plant that we put there about six months ago. And this guy will get put into its own small little pots and grown up and sold to someone who wants a little baby Venus flytrap. So let's put this one to, to the side. And I'll show you how to do that again. Very easy. Gently pull them apart. And there we go. Now the biggest thing that I need you guys to remember is that you need to ensure that the rhizomes that you're pulling apart actually have roots. You see this tiny little rhizome we pulled apart, it has its own root system. If you're trying to pull apart a rhizome that doesn't have roots, the rhizome will most likely die because it needs roots to grow. It isn't impossible, but it is very likely. Another method that people use to divide Venus flytraps is that they actually do something called, see look, those roots all came off there, but it still has its own roots, so it will be fine. But um, what people do is they do something called leaf divisions. And I will not demonstrate because I don't really like doing it, but I will show you. On the rhizome, you may notice that there is this white fleshy bit. This is essentially where all the energy is stored. Now, if I were to pull this leaf off right down to the base of the rhizome and get some of that white parts there, I could actually put that leaf into the soil and it might make its own roots. Now, it is very risky, but you can take one rhizome like this and you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve little pullings. And let's say half of them take, you've gone from one plant to six. And um, yeah, it is very risky in my opinion, but it is possible and many people do it, but I'd rather be safe. And I don't really want to spend so much time putting up a million plants. So yeah, here's another one with its own root system. And what we'll do now is separate the rest of them and then we'll put them all up together. So this is when it may become tricky. Those first few divisions were very easy. The rhizomes were basically split anyway, but this is the part where the rhizome is still attached to the main plant. Now you can see there are roots up there, so there are separate plants, but I'm gonna just show you how it looks like and what it sounds like when the plants are still stuck together. Now, I'm not too sure how well this one's root system has grown, but let's just do it. Grab the plants firmly like before, and you're gonna pull it, you might hear a crack. There we go. Hope you guys heard that. You can see it does have its own root system, which is good. And there is the old rhizome that was connected right there, but now they are separated. And that is a true rhizome division. This small little plant fell out by itself with its root. 
that's very happy. And in here we have two separate plants. Now how can I tell that we have two separate plants? That's actually a very good question. You can see that there are two crowns. There's one plant developing from there and one plant developing from there. That means there are two different crowns and two separate plants. That means we could in theory get another plant out of this. And we did. So you can see we just got another two out of there. So that little experiment, I guess, or that little um, thing I was showing you is essentially what it will sound like, look like and feel like if you're dividing a plant that is still attached by the rhizome, but still has its own roots. Remember, you have to make sure it has its own roots or else your plant probably won't take. So let's just do one last look at the main plant here. You can see we have a plant here off to the side. We have one there, one there and one down here. So we have four more plants in here. So what I will do now is divide this one up like I just showed you and let's see how lucky we get with um, dividing them up. Let's hope that we get some with the roots. So I'm not comfortable enough dividing up the rest of this plant because they are pretty much all stuck together in the same rhizome. Trust me, it is possible. I could cut it right there, literally get a knife or some scissors and you can cut it. I've done this before. You, you take the little scissors and you put it in there, cut it apart and you can separate them like that. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not comfortable with it right now. And we have tons of plants already, but what did end up happening is that I mistakenly pulled some leaves off. So we have some leaf cuttings for you guys. So I will put these guys into a pot as well and you guys can then, you know, monitor over time and watch them grow up. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can watch these guys and all the other ones we're about to pot up grow and, you know, get some updates on them. So from that one pot, we now have eight fully grown plants that are able to be put into their own pots. And we have all of these different leaf pullings that we will be putting up together as well. Now, let me make sure I have enough pots. Okay, I have just enough pots. Let me show you how this is done. You're going to fill up the bottom of your pot. Now you fill up the rest of this. Pull the soil to the side. Now you will do the bottom bit. Pack it up so that it makes good contact. Remember, not too tight. You don't want to strangle the plants, but firm enough that if you turn it upside down, nothing falls out. You take one of your little baby plants, put it up against that little V that you just made, just like that. And now you fill up this gap, making sure that you press the soil against the roots so that it has good contact with the water and nothing dries up and dies, because we don't want that. And there we go, we have another Venus flytrap to add to the table. So now let me continue this for all the other ones. And when we get to the leaf cuttings, I'll show you what we do with them. Let's go. So now I can hear you guys asking one more question. How deep do we actually need to plant the Venus flytrap? Well, that's why I left the biggest one to last. You want the rhizome to be below the ground, but the rest of the growth above ground. You don't want it to be like that. You don't want the rhizome above ground and you don't want the plant below ground either. You basically want the part where the, the white rhizome becomes green to be at soil level so essentially that level right there make sure that the rhizome is covered and the top of the plant is obviously out of the soil and there we go now the plant is covered you can see the part where the rhizome goes from green to white that's the soil level right there the plant is happy it's solid in there it won't come out even if i shake it gently now this plant is ready to grow and grow out to those other babies and will be very very happy now the last most important part of this all is trying to get those leaves that are broke off to grow 
those leaf cuttings that we mistakenly made. Now don't forget you want the soil to be firm just like the others so that your leaves, your leaf cuttings or leaf pullings that we, we made together will actually have good contact with the soil and therefore the water. Now once again this is a very very simple thing to do. You take a leaf cutting and you push it into the ground. Kind of like a succulent. Get it nice and deep in there and that is one leaf cutting. Do it with the rest. Remember they have to have this white fleshy bit, some of the rise and they need the energy to create new roots. And that one I'll just cover with some soil because it's very soft. And there we go guys, that's how you do your leaf pullings. It's kind of like a succulent. This is another way to propagate your plants. And obviously what we just showed you now with taking out all the plants that it naturally makes by itself. So yeah, let's show you what we got. And here we are. We went from one plant to eight, as you can see. And we have this small pot of leaf pullings that we did by mistake. And you know, we might get one or two from here. And that is how you divide your Venus flytrap. That's how you do divisions, rhizome pullings, and leaf pullings, um, basically leaf cuttings also. And if you wanted to cut those up, like I showed you, um, obviously rhizome cuttings. Very, very simple guys. And um, that's how you get tons and tons of Venus flytraps. And of course you can do this like forever and you could have infinite amounts of Venus flytraps. So that's how you get as many Venus fly traps as you want. And that is it guys, that is how you divide your plants up, your Venus fly traps. that's how you can get as many as you want. Just don't stop that process, you will end up with way too many. But yeah, I hope you guys found that helpful. And if you did, please remember to subscribe to the channel because you guys can then watch their update videos, see how they're doing. Don't forget to like this video if you did find it helpful and comment below on what you thought about the process. I'd be interested to see if you guys think it's an easy process or actually a little bit of a difficult one. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.